Okay. <laughs> Sorry, Dance. Okay. <laughs> All right. Sige. So, ato i na mo join si Dancy. So, uh, again, I'll present the file, no? Again, uh, welcome to uh, Clinical Parasitology. So, again, this is our first uh, course for this uh this is the first subject that we're going to focus in the didactics, clinical parasitology. A major subject, again, in the board exam for those who are going to take the boards. And for those na dili, again, sa medicine, makitaan gya po siya. Okay? All right. All right. So, again, uh, this is uh, parasitology. Now, before we start, no, during my lecture, um, for my students before, na, you know, na students na ako, um, during the lecture, I will ask questions, no, mga side questions, questions that may or may not be related to parasitology. Um, so, um, if mo ask ko, please answer din naman. Okay, <laughs> all right. So, para na interaction. And then, kada na mo answer, uh, please tell me kung unsa mo na block. Okay, letter A, letter E, F, G, or H ba? Okay, because I will uh, take note of that, no, para at the end of the lecture or at the end of parasitology, um, ako lang taon kung kinsa tong mga, kinsa tong block na uh, daghang na answer para at least na sila mga privilege. No, pwedeng um, additional points or pwedeng ma-exam to quiz. Okay? Alright. So, para naman natin interaction gamay. Alright? Okay, ayan. Sige. So, again, we'll start with um, parasitology. So, for, before we continue, no, or before we we go into the lecture proper. Uh, so what are the references or resources that I used um, in this lecture? So first is, of course, I used my review notes uh, when I reviewed for the board exam. Uh, that is, of course, from Lemar. And um, the second one is from Pioneer, OK? So I enrolled in two review centers when I was uh, reviewing for the board exam. So I used their notes, no? And then ako siyang mix okay? And majority, ang format kita sa notes kay same siya sa hong lemar na notes, alright? Kay mas nabahig magut siya, mas naisya pagkabahig. Okay, so again, review notes na ako from the board exam, uh, from the review centers that I enrolled in. Second are books, of course, starting with your Garcia na book. Uh, this is Diagnostic Medical Parasitology. It's a great book, actually. That's a great book. Next, you have Paniker also, which is a book in parasitology. Also, some information from Jawet, no? So I included this reference because because um, as far as I know, majority of the schools of medicine, no, mga medical schools, they use uh, Jawets for microbio para nila. All right. So at least no, uh, from here, makas to good na mo review kato mga mu med dayon after. So and mga mu med pod after boards, di ba ako na mu med. So ayan, derecho na sa Jawets. So na mga information from Jawets. Okay, but ang Jawets mang good or Jawets, it's very summarized, no, like concise na jo siya kaayo. So, um, ginagmay lang na information from there. Okay, but majority good from Garcia, from my review notes, and of course from Bailey, din siya mawala, and from Zybig, uh, your parasitology book in your second year, no, uh, when you were still in second year, so second sem. So again, um, kanang, uh, these are my suggested readings then for you, dears, if you want to read more about parasitology. No, Garcia is a great book talaga. And Bailey then, all right? And also Zybig. So, kanin sila. All right? So, muni siya tong mga references. Uh, muni ako references na gigamit for uh, the lecture in parasitology. Okay. All right. So, we go now to introduction. All right. So, what is again parasitology? So, parasitology by the name itself, it's an area of biology, basically. And it focuses on the scenario or scenario that as an organism depends on another organism for it to survive, no, or for it to live. So meaning, if wala ang other organism, no, dili siya ka survive or dili siya mabuhi. All right, that's parasitology. Now, parasitology is a broad field, no. It could have a lot of mga uh, subcategories, um, and one of that is of course veterinary parasitology. If you want to focus on the parasites that affect your pets, affect animals, and of course our main focus for this lecture and for med tech is the medical parasitology. So these are parasites. Uh, that affect humans, no? Affect man, okay? So, muna siya itong gina-focus, all right? Of course naman, we're humans, charot, okay? Para na ubang mga humans na mga hayop, charot. Joke lang, okay? All right, so again, medical parasitology. Now, your medical parasitology is also classified into two parts. You have protozoology and helminthology. So, protozoology, it focuses on protozoa, no? The protozoa and parasites. And you have helminthology, which focuses on your helminths, your worms, no? All right. And of course, again, as mentioned, it focuses on this type of symbiotic relationship known as parasitism. Again, ang, ang premise sa parasitism is that there's one organism that depends on another organism for it to live. 
and most often no it's at the expense of the other organism meaning kanina organism mo depend siya og usa ka organism at the expense of iyang de dependent so harmful siya sa usa ka organism all right so we'll discuss more about that later all right so many shy um introduction now the major divisions of your medical parasitology uh we go now with the first division, which are your protozoa. So for protozoa, again, uh, your amoebae, uh, this include your amoebae, your flagellates, no? ciliate, uh, sporozoans, coccidia, and microsporidia. So this is the first group of parasites that we're going to discuss after um, introduction no? to para. Next, you have nematoda, your roundworms, no? nematodes. Next, you have the platyhelminthes or platyhelminths, your flatworms, uh, your cestodes, tapeworms, or trematodes, your flukes, no? your flukes. And then you have also your pentastomids, your tongueworms, and acanthocephala, thorny-headed worms, mga less occurring na mga parasitic worms. no? And of course, Excuse me, the last one, which I believe also is the parang uh, more neglected part of medical parasitology, and that is your arthropods. No, Your arthropods or your insects, uh, spiders, mites, and ticks can also become parasites. But as per experience, as, as far as I can remember then, when I was still a student learning parasitology, and uh, with mam bi mura wala kabot wala mi kabot og arthropods no i'm not sure if nakabot pud mo pero muna akong experience ako ma remember gyud all right i could be wrong pero <laughs> muna siya ma think na ako na medyo neglected siya okay all right ayan pero lumalabas pa rin sa boards there are still some questions na mogawas so we'll uh, focus uh, we'll discuss a short lang short uh, summarized version of the arthropods medically important arthropods okay so these are the major divisions of uh, the parasites that could affect uh, man okay now also i may a flow chart but at least it will give you a um overview no a glimpse of what are the unsay atong flow all right and uh this is not based on mga phylum phylum no uh this is just parang ano summarize na talaga siya korega mugna mugna ani all right para mas easy siya ma interpret okay so your human parasitic diseases are again uh, divided into major, three major uh categories the first one is of course your protozoans no uh, as we have mentioned example protozoans are then subdivided into four First one is your amoebae, or of course amoeba, and then followed by your flagellates, no, and then followed by your ciliate, okay, and lastly followed by your uh, sporozoans, okay, all right. So kabantay mo na ako first question, yes, di ba kabantay mo ang ciliate ra ang singular, so nga man because there's only one pathogenic or medically important ciliate, kinsa manisha, what is considered to be the most okay. Okay, Balantidium coli, yes. Kinsa to na black? Alright. Ha? Huh? Letter. L letter? <laughs> Unsa the letter? Duha H? Answer. Okay, duha mo, sige. H o? F, sir. Okay, alright. So, very good, no? So, if mo answer mo, dears, please, um, kanang isulti ra no kay dili ko kita sa if inyong i-chat <laughs> kay ga percent ko sa file so di ko kita all right so yes that's correct no very good very good that you remember the only pathogenic only medically important ciliate that's why singular ra siya is balantidium coli do not forget do not forget of course we're going to discuss about that when we go to the different uh, parasites very good okay all right now aside from protozoans of course the next uh, group are your ectoparasites and your ectoparasites usually diri makita ninyong arthropods no yung mga insects, mga mga mosquitoes, etc. All right. And of course, the last uh, group are your metazoans, which consists now of your helminths. And your helminths, again, divide into three groups, your nematodes, your roundworms, and then you have your trematodes, which are your flukes. And then lastly, you have your cestodes. Okay, sorry, parang may enter. All right, sige. Okay, so again, going back, uh, so this is a summarina of... Um, Oh, sorry. So, okay, all right. So again, mani siya ang summary no sa atong mga parasitic diseases, parasites na atong i-discuss throughout uh, the didactics in parasitology. Okay? So protozoans, ectoparasites, metazoans. And after the intro, next week, we'll start with protozoans, with your amoebae, mga amoeba. All right. Okay. Now we go now to your basic association. Since we have already dis mentioned no, that parasitism is a symbiotic relationship. So we'll discuss more about that. So when you say symbiosis, no, again, it's a parang general term. This is the umbrella umbrella term, siya talaga ang overall term. Uh, and it also, it just means basically living together. 
ayan. So, mga mahilig mag-live-in siya. Charot. <laughs> mahilig mag symbiosis Okay. All right. So, it's living together. no Living together of two different species of organisms. All right. Ayan. So, that's symbiosis. Now, under symbiosis, you have the three major types of symbiotic relationships, starting first with commensalism. Now, commensalism is, again, the association of two different organisms that is beneficial to one, pero neutral to each other. So, example, um, ikaw, example, mag, 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 mag mo, no? Or, man, yeah, or ikaw rin naibog niya, pero para niya wala, o, di ba? So, commensalism. So, it's beneficial to you. Beneficial ba to siya, no? Dili din siya beneficial na situation, kay ma-hurt man ka. Charot, but anyway, so, ang point lang is beneficial to one, pero um, neutral to the other. So, wala, wala ra siya effect sa usa. Okay? Pero to the other, it's beneficial. Alright? And the second one is, of course, mutualism. Ayan. So, mutualism, it's both beneficial, no? Both of the parties can benefit from each other. So, muna siya itong goal, no? Sa itong mga relationships dyan, sa itong mga symbiotic relationships, dapat mutualistic, no? Mutualism, gida ito ang ipairal. Okay? Strive for mutualism. Okay? Alright. And of course, as we have already mentioned in the previous slides, parasitism. Parasitism, them again harmful to one pero beneficial to the other and, and what that's what we're going to focus no the parasitism a symbiotic relationship okay all right so these are the types of again living uh, association of living things the symbiotic uh, relationships okay all right now we go now to the different classification of your parasites no the different types of parasites so we'll start first according to habitat no so asaman salaga puyo no uh, so we have two types you have first the endo Parasite. So by the name itself, endo parasite. Endo diba is a prefix that means inside or living within. So it basically it's a parasite that lives within, okay, nasha sa sulud sa host. Okay, nasha sulud sa body sa host. Okay. And once the endoparasite is inside the body of the host, it establishes an infection. Okay, because again, it's inside the host, so pedisha mag create diseases, create shaog infection. Okay. Now majority of your pra uh, parasitic diseases, both helminth or protozoa. Um, they are endoparasites. No, they live within the body of the host. Okay. All right. Now, in comparison or in contrast, you have your ectoparasite. So we have already mentioned that. No, ecto. Ecto is a prefix that means parang uh, outside. No. So here, ectoparasite, parasites that live only within the surface. Okay. Within the surface of uh, the body of the host. No. And it does not penetrate. Ayan. Di siya ganag penetration. So ano yung side charot. Okay. So it does not um, penetrate the tissue. Only live within the surface of the host now again when the end ectoparasite establishes no um an uh parang habitat uh, it establishes an habitat within the surface of uh, the host then that call that is now called an infestation ayan so easy to remember lang, no? easy to differentiate but the endoparasite you're inside no so it can cause infection pero kung ecto ecto outside so it can cause infestation okay only within the surface all right so that's the first classification according to habitat next we go now to um, classification according to mode of living so how do they live no without you charot how do they live um according to uh the mode of um living no? how do they live <laughs> live <laughs> si balik balik. okay all right so first one is of course obligate no so i'm sure you're all familiar with uh, this term sa bakte. so obligate when you say um obligate kailangan necessary no it really needs to have a host no it really needs to be inside or within the surface of the host para mabuhi no its entire existence depend on the host so without the host the parasite will not live so it's um it's really kailangan talaga niya no sana all diba? so need talaga niya para mabuhi so, kinsa man yung mga obligate ano dira, dear parasites, charot. Okay, so again, they cannot exist without the host. Okay, again, existence depends entirely upon the host. So, example is your Toxoplasma gondii and your Plasmodium. Now, uh, the second uh, type is, of course, facultative. So, your facultative parasites, okay, mga mga parasites na appeal sa faculty, charot, joke lang. Okay, so facultative, they may exist in free forms, no, free living forms, or may become parasitic when the need arises. So basically saying, with or without the host, I can still live. O, diba? That's dapat maging facultative tayo, ganun, okay? With or without the host, I can still live. So example, your strongyloides, no? That's why strongyloides, as you can remember, ato ni siyang ginabansagan as the strong, independent woman that she is, strongyloides, no? Facultative, with or without the host, with or without you, I can still live. O, diba? Yes, ganun, okay? That's how uh, facultative parasites operate. So muna siya itong goal po, dapat with or without 
anyone we can live charot okay all right so that's that the the facultative parasite next we have accidental or incidental parasite so when you are an accidental parasite or incidental parasite this is a type of parasite you know that can that infects an unusual host meaning in its life cycle supposed to be um it infects a host na no, not normal not a normal part of its life cycle no so the parasite shouldn't be there or the parasite shouldn't be infecting this particular host but because of mga accidental ingestion accidental practices no the parasite then goes to this different host okay so example kanina mga parasites here these parasites uh, normal host or natural host are your dogs no if i'm not mistaken but because of mga um an accidental practices of humans no um again unnecessary practices then uh these parasites can be also transmitted to your humans accidentally so when that happens these parasites are now considered accidental okay accidental parasites okay sige sige so obligate since na mention man sa bacte before sige can you give an example of a genus or bahala genus or species bacteria na obligate an aerobe ayan ako obligate an aerobe Dami, Mag pwede. Okay. Sige, sige, go. Alright. Okay, so, okay. So, kinsa man ito na black? Yes. E. E, okay. Sige, kinsa pa? H, sir. Okay, H. Ano sa'y answer ni mo, dears? Clostridium tetani, sir. Okay, very good. Ayan, sige. Napay mo answer? Yes? Okay, G, kamusta kayo dyan? May, may gusto mo sumagot dyan? <laughs> okay. All right. Same answer, sir. Okay, sige. So, uh, cross region. Very good. So, that's correct, dears. No, these are example of your obligate and aerobes. Yes. Don't forget your back 10. Ako, my gosh, important. Majority, um, if mo take mo sa boards, microbio para la, eh, major uh, dako ju percentage ang bakte ana okay all right so obligate anaerobes yes clostridium very important very popular you know among the obligate anaerobes you have bacteroides that's still correct bifidobacterium you have valonella no and uh, other dagan pa jud sila all right so that's an example of your obligate those are examples of your obligate anaerobes okay all right so we now continue with the uh, further classification of your parasites according to mode of living first is of course a uh, the next is permanent so when you say the parasite is permanent meaning it only resides um within the host for its entire life so example if humans young host no and for the entirety of its life dito ragi siya forever o diba so loyal faithful sana all okay so sana all faithful ayan so permanent parasite now in contrast is of course temporary so temporary lang no pansamantala okay so the parasite only resides within the host for a short period of time so example plasmodium now when we talk about plasmodium species when we go to the discussion of plasmodium species as you will see in its life cycle that again plasmodium only resides within example humans for a short period of time until ma develop in a stage and then once this stage is already achieved it is now picked up by the mosquito and then within the mosquito another life cycle happens or development so that's the part uh, that's the point of temporary only a short period of time okay all right next you have spurious the spurious parasite it just passes the digestive tract of humans without infecting no without causing any disease so example is amiria sardine amiria sardine is a coccidian no parasite similar group with your uh, cryptosporidium, cyclospora, etc. Now, when it um, enters the digestive tract of humans, it only passes. No, igura sa mo agi. No, di sa mo cause any infection. It doesn't cause any infection. Okay. Now we have aberrant. No, aberrant parasites are those parasites that once they are inside the host, they do not develop further into, excuse me, latter stages. So, example, if the parasite enters as a larva, no, for the entirety of its life, it will remain as a larva. Or if it's an egg, it will remain as an egg. Okay, so it does not further develop into latter stages. So example, Toxocara canis. Okay, next you have parthenogenetic. Now, parthenogenetic is very um, uh, unique in a way because it usually uh, refers to female parasites that can reproduce or that can produce offsprings without the help of a male. Ayan, without the help of a laki, no? without the help of a kek. 
keks <laughs> para ma-fertilize siya. Okay? So, um, a good example of that is, of course, strongyloides. That's why, we again, we, re, we call strongyloides as the strong independent woman. Di ba? Kaya pwede siyang, di niya kailangan ng ekal or laki para mabuntis. No? So, immaculate conception, ganun. Okay? And aside from that, pwede po siyang mo live without the host. Di ba? So, strong independent woman, yun na si strongy. Okay? Alright. Ayan. So, again, parthenogenetic, a female parasite that is able to produce offsprings um, in the form of eggs that um, become larvae, no, they hatch immediately um, without the presence. No, they can produce offsprings without the presence of the male parasite. Okay, ayan. So again, dilis lama fertilized by the male. So strong, independent woman. Good example is strongyloides. Okay, all right, ayan. Now again, still continuing with the um, mode of living, na mga parasites. Uh, with uh, the next one is coprophilic. For coprophilic, usually mga protozoans. Copro by the name itself means tool, no? So they are able to multiply within uh, the fecal matter outside human body. All right, so maka multiply sila in fecal matter outside the human body. Next, you have hematozoic by the name itself. They live within RBCs. So you have your blood parasites. And then cytozoic, they live within cells or tissues. So it's not necessarily in RBCs. So example, you have trichinella, spiralis. So basically, ang hematozoic, if you think about it, it's a type of cytozoic, diba? Because um, hematozoic, RBCs are still cells. So cyto hematozoic is a type of cytozoic then parang ganun. Okay, all right. So next, you have silos Cilozoic, cilozoic parasites that live or reside within body cavities. So example, Mansonella. And you have, of course, enterozoic by the name itself. These are parasites that reside within the intestines. Okay? All right. So and majority of your parasites, human parasites are enterozoic. No, they live within your intestines. Okay. All right. Ayan. So those are the classification of parasites according to mode of living. Next, we classify our parasites according to pathogenicity. Of course, very self-explanatory. When the parasite is pathogenic, of course, that means it's able or capable of causing disease, all right? And if it's non-pathogenic, they are considered as commensals, okay? So commensal organisms, no, they live uh, within the host without any causing infections or without causing any infection, sorry, without causing any infection. So incapable of causing disease. So example, your trichomonas tenax and tamiba gingivalis, these are commensals, no? Mga commensals na protozoa, all right? Okay, so pathogenic, non-pathogenic, very self-explanatory. Okay, all right. Now we go now to the classification of hosts. No, so if you classify parasites, we also classify your hosts. So first, uh, we classify hosts. Uh, the first classification is your definitive or final host. So this is the host in which no the parasite undergoes sexual reproduction. Ayan. So gihimo kang honeymoon area sa parasite. So ikaw ang gihimo niyang hotel or motel. No, dili siya mag sex. No, dili siya magpadaghan through sex. Okay. So Again, it's the host in which the parasite multiplies or undergoes sexual reproduction. Now, it could be humans no, or other living organisms, but majority of your, your human parasitic infections, humans, kita mismo ang definitive hosts, okay, or final hosts. So, <laughs> kita ilang gamiton, i-hijack as a motel lagi. Honeymoon nila, okay, diba? Bastos. All right. Next is, of course, in contrast, your intermediate hosts. For intermediate hosts, um, the parasites only undergo asexual, asexual reproduction, all right? And usually the stage of parasite that is within the host are the larva, okay? The larval stages. So basically parang um, the host becomes parang ano lang, pampa rest, no? Pampa tubo or like, it's not like, honeymoon talaga. Parang ano lang, pang resting, rest house, ganun. Okay, that's how I like to think about it. Basta, asexual reproduction, intermediate um, hosts. And a parasite can also, can also have more than one intermediate host. So when we go to our discussion in the different uh, parasites, no, you'll see that most of your cestodes and trematodes, if you can also remember, uh, they have you no know, a lot of intermediate hosts, or they can have more than one intermediate hosts. Okay, all right. Next type of host is the paratenic. No, when you say paratenic hosts, this is the host na nag harbor sa parasite na dili na maka develop further into later stages. So basically, it's a type of host that harbors the aberrant parasite. No, when the parasite again does not develop further into stages, uh, it uh, within the host, the host is now called a paratenic host. But the parasite is still alive, no, and can still 
infect others, okay? All right. And in a way, the parasite uses the host as a transport medium, okay? Uh, para ma-transport siya from one host to another, okay? So example, if Paragonimus metacercaria and uh, Diphilobothrium latum, plerocercoid larva, and big carnivorous fish. Uh, please erase din ang letter D that adheres sa, bore, uh, sa board. <laughs> Dapat bore na siya, B-O-A-R, okay? Paki-erase sa D, thanks. Okay, all right, ayan. So um, again, that's paratonic host. No, the parasite cannot develop further without uh, into later stages and once the parasite once this type of parasite is inside that host the host becomes the paratonic host okay all right Diane. next we have uh, the reservoir okay the reservoir host no same principle with being the carrier you harbor the parasite but you remain asymptomatic and it allows no you allow the reservoir host allows the continued development of the parasite in its life cycle, hence again becoming additional sources of infections. Okay, so since because since you feel like you're okay, no, you don't feel any symptoms, but you you are harboring the parasite, so you will still continue with your uh, daily uh, routine activities. No, especially if wala kay, if pro, if you don't have proper hygiene practices, so must must spread gini mo siya because you you are under the impression or you are under the impression na. Wala you're fine, diba? Ayan. So, um, example, very good example, your pigs, no? Prezobuzzer reservoir host talaga of your Balantidium coli. You have field rats, reservoir hosts of Paragonimus, and your cats for Brugia malayi. Okay, and of course, accidental hosts, similar with their accidental parasites. Again, it's the host in which the parasite is not usually found, or the parasite shouldn't be there. The parasite isn't supposed to be there, okay? So example again, man in echinococcosis. But because of mga accidental practices, accidental ingestion, then the host can acquire this parasite. And the host now becomes an accidental host. Okay, all right, ayan. Now, um, in the host-parasite relationship, diba, we have the types of hosts, we have the types of parasite. We have also another player in the relationship, which are your vectors. Okay, now your vectors, the main purpose lang talaga with vectors is for transportation. No? It transports one um, one parasite from one host to another. So it, trans it transmits the parasite from one host to another. And we have two types. The first one is your biologic vector. When you say biologic vector, this is the vector that takes, uh, that involves itself, no, or is involved in the life cycle of the parasite. Meaning, um, the, the vector plays an important role in the life cycle of the parasite. And usually, um, the parasite resides within no, the biologic vector for the life cycle to continue or for its development to continue. So a very good example is your mosquitoes. Yes, in filariasis and malaria, mosquito is involved in the life cycle of the plasmodium species for your malaria. So if we live mosquitoes, then... Um, the malarial species, plasmodium species, will not uh, further develop in its life cycle. Okay, so dili complete iya hang life cycle. All right, so that's the purpose of your biologic vectors. It involves or it takes part also in the life cycle of uh, the parasite. Now, in comparison, you have your mechanical or phoretic. By the name itself, mechanical phoretic, it only serves as a transport medium, parent. So transportation lang talaga. Gihi mo siyang Uber or Grab sa imuhang uh, parasite, no? So it only assists in the transfer but it does not play an important role in the life cycle of the parasite only for transportation lang talaga all right so an example is your housefly um, which serves as a mechanical vector for amoeba amoebiasis and cockroach for ascariasis okay please uh, take note there's no how you pronounce filariasis iasis no amoebiasis iasis no so Again, it's important that you pronounce it correctly na. So, kay mga interns na mo, para at least, no, magabot sa mga hospitals puhon, alright? Kay mano na siya, like, na may mention na, uy, this patient is suspected of having amibiasis. Pak! Diba? Ma-threaten ng ubang schools. Yes. Di lang ko mo-mention sa schools. Charat yung <laughs> competition. Man, di, but yes. So, that's how you pronounce it properly, dear. Sa, so, filariasis, iasis, amibiasis, ascariasis. Ayan. Okay. So, these are the types of vectors. Biologic, mechanical. All right. Okay. All right. Now, before we continue with exposure, no? Um, how we, what are the situations that we can get your parasite or on sa mga conditions? Uh, do you have any questions? Yes. Any clarifications, dear? Okay, okay, da. all right, okay, sige, sige. Okay, so we continue with parasitic exposure, no, the di con different conditions na pwede na tong feel no, if we have the, the parasite. So starting with, of course, the carrier. When you say carrier, same principle with your reservoir. You harbor the pathogen, but 
you remain asymptomatic, okay? So, you have it, no? But again, you don't experience any symptoms, okay? So, since we're talking about carrier, yes, okay, next question ako, yes. Um, who is this well-known carrier sa Bacte, no? Na yung carry ang salmonella, and yung spread sa tanan, no? Sa US in the late 1900s. What's the Mary name? Mary Malon, sir. Okay, you're Mary Malon, or also known as C, Typhoid Mary. Okay, so, unsa to na black? Sure ko si Andrea to. F, sir, F. F, okay, all right. Perfect. So, that's correct, no? Uh, Mary Malon. Now, si Mary Malon, it was discovered, no? Um, asa daw na site within the body of Mary Malon, nagpuyo si salmonella or nag-reside? At what Gal? area? Gal? Okay. Gal okay. Okay, very good. Sige. So, si Cleo and, unsa to na blocks? F, sir. E, uh, e. Yeah. Uh, e and F. Okay. All right. Very good. So that is correct. No. Very good. That's good that you remember. The Salmonella species, no organisms, they resided within gallbladder. Okay. Of Mary Malone. So that is why wala siya nakafeel anything. So hence, no. During digestion, di ba magrelease og bile. So of course, maapil ang Salmonella. Mapunta siya sa intestines, of course. And Mary Malone, as what I have read, <laughs> uh, wala siya proper mga hygiene practices. Then, so of course. Uh, cook pagyud siya. So, of course, ayan, na spread niya salmonella through cooking. Ayan. So, carrier. Okay? And wala man siya na feel, that's why she thought na she's okay. So, napadayan kaya po siya sa yung practices, no? She continued, went on with her um, unsanitary na mga practices. So, that's why na spread ang salmonella. Okay, very good. Typhoid Mary, Mary Malon, gallbladder. Perfect. Okay, next. We we go now, or we, we go now to the pre-patent period or your biologic incubation. So this is the point of entry of the parasite to the point of recovery, no, of the parasitic uh, forms, no, cysts, larva, eggs from your human samples or from the samples. So it's not necessary that you develop the symptoms here, pa. It's just uh, the point lang of uh, development, no. At this stage, the parasite undergoes development, pa rin, in its life cycle until maka recover na ka or until you can recover parasitic eggs cysts larvae in the sample all right so that's biologic incubation or pre-patent period so similar pod with your uh, bacteria silang biologic incubation next you have clinical incubation period this time this is the point of entry of the parasite to the development of symptoms or the presentation of symptoms so nanakay ma feel na mga symptoms uh, like fever ba diarrhea no etc depending on the parasite Okay, so these are your uh, different types of parasitic exposure. All right, next also we have what we call auto-infection or auto-reinfection. So for auto-infection by the name itself, you, you are already infected by a particular type of parasite, but you still got it no, another time or a second time from your self regapon So you're the source, auto-infection. So example, very good example is Strongy. Uh, it causes internal auto-infection. So example, you, you are already infected with strongyloides. Uh, wala niyo siya natambalan. So the Strongy then infects other organs, no? Or disseminates. Ayan. So that's an example of auto-infection. Example also, enterobius, no? External auto-infection ng enterobius. External. So example, di ba? Eggs of enterobius, if you can remember, are laid in the perianal folds, no? Perianal folds of um, the patient. So because that's itchy, no? So they scratch it. <laughs> okay, what happens is, of course, after scratching, my tendency na to inhale, di ba? <laughs> or to smell ang yung scratch. So therefore, balik na japo ng eggs, inhalation. So that's auto-infection, okay? So you get the same parasite pa rin, and the source is from yourself, all right? Now, if auto-infection cannot be addressed, no? If wala niyo siya natambalan, or you did not undergo treatment for it, it can proceed to super-infection. So example, um, strongyloides, no? So for the longest time, if you exhibit auto infection the parasite and the host will um will achieve equilibrium no so they're okay now with each other na the human the body can fight off lang your um strongyloides by its immune system but there are cases, especially if the host becomes immunocompromised, the host develops underlying conditions that will um, make your immune system um, weak, okay, or less functional. It can now uh, make the strongyloides proliferate. So that will now result to super infection. So dissemination to other organs of the strongyloides and other um, mga severe complications na. All right? So auto infection and then super infection. Okay. All right. Ayan. Now uh, we go now to the different sources of infections. What are the possible areas no, that we can get your parasite? So we'll start first, of course, with your soil. And soil is considered to be the most common source, no? Most common source of infection. And it's primarily brought by um, the lack of unsanitary, no? Uh, the lack of sanitary toilets, sorry. Lack of sanitary toilets for uh, 
disposal of mga human wastes, no? And also the use of night uh, soil as fertilizer and human excreta pod as fertilizer. So of course, that could be a source of uh, parasites. So a good example ako nabasahan or nakakita na video is sa North Korea daw, no? Um, they use human excreta as a fertilizer. Hence, uh, prevalent dito, it's well uh, prevalent yod widespread ang helminthiasis, soil transmitted helminthiasis, trichuris, no? You have ascaris, also hookworm, okay? And yes, that's another example, no? These are your hats. That's our first mnemonic, hats. Uh, these are your soil transmitted helminths, no? These are helminths that can be transmitted from soil. Soil transmitted helminths, mnemonics, hats, hookworm, ascaris lumbricoides, trichuris, and strongy Loides. Please take note. Hats. Okay. All right. Next source, of course, water. Usually, mga amoebae, cysts of amoebae or flagellates, and your cercaria of schistosomes. All right. Also, food. You know, improper cooking of food or undercooked food. You can get trematodes. You no, know, your flukes, uh, especially from vegetation, mga kangkong. Yes, ganern. And also, cestodes, tapeworms, pork, beef, fish, diba. So more on that when we go to the different. Uh, trematodes and cestodes. Okay, all right. Ayan. Next, we go now to your arthropods. Again, your vectors from their bites, mosquitoes, no malaria, filarial worms, triatoma bugs, or your kissing bugs, trypanosoma, cruzi, phlebotomus, phlebotomus, sandflies, your leishmania species. From animals, no direct sources. Uh, example for cats, for toxoplasma, and rats for H. nina. All right. And of course, uh, another possible source is from another individual or another human. When, again, they become carriers. No example, they are carriers of entamoeba histolytica. So they are asymptomatic, so they can spread entamoeba histolytica, especially if they work as food handlers and what's like proper hygiene practices. Okay, so these are the possible sources of infections. The most common is, of course, your soil. Okay, very good. Please take note. All right. Now we go now to the modes of transmission, the different types of modes of transmission, how you get no the girl, shout out by Taylor Swift, shout out, how you get uh, the parasite, the different means of transmission. So starting first with, of course, oral, ayan, fecal oral, the most common, ayan. So of course, oral, fecal oral, meaning example, you touched it, you touched a something or you ate something that is fecally contaminated, so that's fecal oral, okay? So from the feces, no, you were able or you accidentally put your hands back, okay, or ate something, drank something na fecally contaminated. That is the most common method. Your cestodes, trematodes, protozoans, they are all foodborne. Okay, so pwede siyang fecal oral. All right, or your ascaris, diba? Your nematodes then fecal oral. Okay, next method is your skin penetration, of course. Skin penetration, uh, commonly seen with hookworm and strongy and your schistosoma. So they gain entry to humans by penetrating the skin. Okay, so skin penetration. All right, next, of course, still the same arthropods, your vectors uh, through their bites. Malaria, leishmaniasis, filariasis, trypanoso trypanosomiasis, and of course, babesiosis. All right, so through arthropods, through vectors. Okay, all right. Uh, next is your congenital transmission. Ayan. So congenital transmission, uh, it's transmitted through pregnancy no, or during pregnancy. So a parasite that exhibits this or that can be transmitted through pregnancy is Toxoplasma gondii. Toxoplasma gondii, yang trophozoites, they can cross the placental barrier during pregnancy. Now, Toxoplasma gondii is part no, of a group of agents. No, These group of agents are the agents that can cause congenital infections. Now, unsa may tawag ato na group of agents? What do you call them? Torch, sir. Okay, very good. The torch agents. All right. So uh, the torch agents, no? Very good. So the torch agents, T stands for Toxoplasma. R stands for Rubella. C stands for CMP. Okay, Cytomegalo, that's correct. And H stands for HSP. Herp, herp. Yeah, yeah, very good. The herpes simplex viruses. Okay, very good. Torch. No, some resources mo no torches, no torches. So ang S dito I think stands for syphilis. Okay. Uh, but so far ako nakbasan pa is torch. Okay, so torch, toxoplasma, uh, rubella, CMV, and HSV. Very good. These are the agents considered to be uh, considered that uh, that can be transferred, no, congenitally, or that can cause congenital infections. Now among the torch agents, ayan, ito. Among the torch agents, let's see by, if na mentioned by ni. <laughs> among the torch agents, kinsa ang pinaka common, the most common cause of congenital infections among the torch agents? CMV, sir. Okay, very good. That is CMV. Very good, that's correct. No, among the torch agents, please remember, press the buzzer na, the most common that can cause congenital infections is your CMV, the cytomegalo 
virus. Very good, very good. Okay, all right. Sige. Recall based cytomegalovirus, wala pa tayo viro, pero asa man siya na family of viruses. Herpes viride. Okay, the herpes viride family. Very good. Uh, is this a DNA or RNA virus? Hala. <laughs> DNA or RNA? Or none of the above? Or both? <laughs> Ang mga herpes viride. Ano sa mani sila? Hala, dapat press the buzzer na. DNA, sir. DNA, okay. sir. Okay, very good. That is correct. Don't forget na, dearest, ha? Ang DNA viruses na to, di ba? Uh, when we go to virology, I'll share to you na mnemonics. Chabo na ako. Your papa add po, hehe. So, papa add po, hehe. Di ba, if na kay crush, magpapa add po, hehe. Kaso Facebook. So, papa add po, hehe. Pa Papiloma viride. You have parvo viride. Papova viride. Parvo viride. Adeno viride. Papa add po. Pox viride. He uh, stands for herpes, very day, and H, H in the last, HEPA, DNA, very day. So, kanin sila mga DNA viruses. The rest of the family na wala sa papa ad po hehe are RNA viruses. Adiba. So, that's in virology. When we go to virology. Okay, all right. So, please don't forget ha. Dapat press the buzzer na. Herpes, very day, DNA virus na siya. Okay, very good. And again, among the torch agents, torch agents that can cause congenital infection, the most common is your CMV. Cytomegalo. Virus. Very good. Okay. Next method or mode of transmission is your inhalation of airborne eggs. And this is typically uh, manifested by your enterobius vermicularis. Next, you have sexual intercourse. No? Sexual intercourse, of course, trichomonas vaginalis, a sexually transmitted uh, parasite. But there have been cases also of other parasites that can be transmitted sexually. Examples, the entamoeba hisolitica, no? um, usually through... Um, uh, anal sex practices, okay? All right. And um, last mode of transmission is your iatrogenic transmission. So when you say iatrogenic, uh, drug-related or medical procedure. So example, you have transfusion malaria through blood transfusion and toxoplasmosis after organ transplantation. All right. So transfusion, blood transfusion, ayan, sige, blood bank. Let's see if I remember pa ba. So for blood bank, no, uh, for transfusion practices, diba? Um, this organism, no, uh, usually does not uh, survive cold storage of your blood bags. Hence, it's less likely na ma-transmit po siya through transfusion. So, kinsa man siya na organism. Dili siya ka-survive sa bugnaw na storage sa mong blood bags. That's why mamatay ra po siya <laughs> during storage. Hence, dili na siya ma-transmit through blood transfusion. Kinsa man eh? Kinsa man na organism? Trapanema, sir. Okay, very good. Trapanema, ang so my species? Palidum. Palidum. Okay. Palidum. Subspecies palidum. palidum. Okay. The causative agent of your what's the disease? Syphilis. Syphilis. Okay. Very good. Syphilis. Okay. So, Murag Ubay Ubay Mantuna blocks. Yes. Kinsa Mantu. So, you have, um, I think, E, E, F, sir. E, F, and Nigeo Gage. Ato. G, sir. Okay. All right. All right. Very good. Very good. At least you know, dears. No, I think. Gumay, ubay, ubay, ramo na. I think sa akong section so far kay Duhara mo, kamo, og, nalimun ko sa usan na section. Ang nakabaluan ni na question, no? So that's good, that's good that you remember. So ang um, transmission, no? Uh, this type of organism or this organism cannot withstand the cold storage of your blood bags. Hence, less likely na ma-transmit siya through blood transfusion. And our answer is treponema pallidum, some species pallidum. The causative agent of your syphilis. Okay, so ako rang i- Tantangon na kung webcam dears kay nag tukar na po ni I'm sure. Okay, all right. So that's the last mode of transmission, your iatrogenic transmission. Please take note, ha? don't forget again the most common torch agent that can cause congenital infection. Press the buzzer, wag na magisep, which is CMV. CMV. Okay. Cytomegalo virus. Very good. And the organism that cannot survive the cold storage of your blood bags. Trepanema Okay, Trepanema pallidum. Subspecies pallidum. Very good. Okay, all right. So uh, before we go to diagnostics, dears, yes, ano oras na? 3.54. Sige. So we'll break muna for uh, 15 minutes. So we'll uh, uh, back, balik ramog 4.09, okay, before we continue. All right, so para mag-stretching sa mo or what, uh, before tamo continue. All right, sige. So break ta for 15 minutes and then we'll... Uh, return or resume at 409 okay all right so i'll see you at 409 dears okay
All right, okay. So uh, I joke for for oh nine, sorry. <laughs> Sampai one minute, sorry, sorry. 